Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about how to paint berserkers for 15 millimeter. Specifically, this is for my Raven Feast Warband. And I have a couple of options here. I've got seven different berserkers here from two different manufacturers. Um, I've got some guys who are actually fairly decently armored, some of them here, with some fur cloaks that could be interesting to paint. But I really want to focus this video on painting kind of Caucasian skin at this scale. And so I look to these and I've got, these guys don't have a lot of clothes on, but they also at 15 millimeter, these figures of unknown manufacture are kind of pygmies. So I want to focus on this guy over here on the left because he's really got a lot going on. He's got a lot of personality. He's got a beard. He's got this hair. He's got pants. He's got two different weapons. He's completely jacked. You can see his face. And so I have a lot of different options with this figure over here on the left. And we're going to focus first, of course, with the skin. One of the things I really do when I'm painting in 15 millimeter, or really when I'm painting at any scale, is I want to paint from the inside out. And the reason for that is usually on your figure, the skin, not always, but usually, the skin is going to be the thing that is the deepest on the figure. It's going to have beards on top of it. It's going to have clothing on top of it, hoods, hair. And so if you start by doing his hair and his beard, and then you have to go back and do his face, you're gonna get skin tone all over that nice beard and hair that you just painted. Whereas if you started with the skin, well, the beard is on top of the skin, and so it's going to be a lot easier to touch up the beard without getting skin tone on it. You're not going to get the beard on the skin because the skin is underneath it. And so working from the inside out, especially where the skin is the biggest part of this figure, is going to make our lives a lot easier. What I'm painting with here is I'm using Army Painter's Barbarian Flesh, very aptly named for this particular project. And I've thinned it down a little bit with water, and then I also use a little bit of a matte medium. I believe it's a Liquitex from the uh, art store. I, I like the way that that thins a little more than water. It doesn't get quite as out of control. And then I'm going to go with one coat here and see how it looks. The reason I've primed in white is because when I find when I'm doing a lot of skin tones and earth tones on these kinds of figures, browns, beiges, greens, uh, Caucasian skin tones, a white color, even if you just do one coat and the... Um, it doesn't 100% give you perfect coverage. You can still see just a little bit of white or skin tinted white. It's often on the raised edges and it gives you a very easy natural highlight at 15 millimeters that you can go back and add to later, but you don't have to if you wanna save some time with your highlight. So I really like going with white. Also at 15 millimeters, pri uh, priming in black can make it really hard to see the details. And so I like going in white. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna finish up that figure. I'm gonna finish up the rest of these berserkers and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at his hair and his pants. Hello everyone, so we're done with the skin and what we're gonna move on to now is first of all, in between, I actually painted some of those shields, the backs of them over there in a dark brown. So when I do need to come in here, for example, with this figure, you can see he's got a shield peg, he's gonna get a shield go on there after I've done all the work on the figure, I'll go in and put the shield on there. Um, but with this figure, it's time to start doing the clothing. And in this case, there are a ton of possible options. I'm gonna link an article in the description down below that goes over some of the clothing and uh, dye options that were available in the early medieval period, the quote-unquote dark ages. And I one thing that I really like to do when I do these figures is give them a lot of variety. So what you can see down below is I have a lot of different paints here, and I have them in order of rarity. So the first three paints I'm going to use a lot on the more basic figures, the, po the kind of the poor characters, the ones that don't have a lot of armor. And these are to represent undyed wool, or linens, uh, mummy robe, which is a very slight off-white, skeleton bone is a good beige, and monster brown, all from the army painter. For figures that are going to be a little wealthier, maybe figures with chain mail, also this figure, I'm going to give him one of these uh, middle colors because I want him to have a little bit more character. Um, these are the colors. I have some darker uh, leather brown, and then Vallejo's light rust, so it's kind of a reddish brown. Um, I have a scaly hide and desert yellow, 
And then finally, this is what's going to go on this figure. It is uh, Vallejo's Luftwaffe Uniform World War II. And the reason is it's a really nice desaturated blue, which is going to represent the blue made by the Wode plant. You know, if you had like face paintings, you could use that um, Wode blue color as a dye for cloth as well. So this guy's going to get a very desaturated blue. And... The finally, for just a handful of characters, they're going to get, of course, red and purple, the hardest colors to have during this time period, uh, especially purple often reserved for royalty. So for these berserkers, they're mostly going to get these really common colors, maybe a couple of these middle colors mixed in, none of the red or purples. And with this figure, what I've done is I've taken this, because Vallejo is a very pigment-rich paint, is I've taken this paint and... It's very thin. It's very thin because I want to take advantage of my white prime here so that when I paint it, it is a little patchy looking. These, this is going to be pants made in the year 900, 1000. These should not be perfectly uniform looking pants. They should be worn. They should be patchy. They should not all be the same color, um, even on the same figure. And so I want this paint to be thin. I don't want to go in there and do a second coat and make it all nice and even because I want it to look a little worse for wear. I want it to look a little lived in. And one thing I will say is it's really hard to do this at 15 millimeter with a camera. Honestly, it's really hard to do this with any scale with a camera. And so I'm going to get him done in blue. And I'm going to go back in and do the rest of the cloth on these figures in a variety of the other colors, but mostly sticking to the linen or undyed wool colors. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like. So now we're moving on to some of the various accessories and bits on our particular figure. You'll notice I've done a couple over here as test figures. I was trying out some various color browns and to make sure I didn't want a brown that was too similar to the skin tone or too red. And I feel like the browns on these figures ended up being a little too similar to the skin tone. So in this figure, what we're gonna do now is we're going to do the brown. Now, there's not a lot of brown leather on this. He has a belt, some of which got covered in blue before and his shoes, I'm also gonna make leather. Um, and I've chosen to use the appropriately titled Leather Brown because it's a good mid-brown, not too light, not too dark, and not too similar to the skin tone in terms of having some reds. This belt is going to be hard to get, especially on 15 millimeter figures. Your, your details might be a little hard, so I might need to go back in with that blue color to clean up the pants a bit, especially because... This figure is sculpted with the belt. You can kind of see bits of the pants coming over the belt. And then I'm also going to do his shoes in this brown. Then after that, I've mixed up a little mix of leather brown, and I happen to have this model air Vallejo wood. Um, it's a little thin, so I wouldn't use it on its own. Uh, it's also a little orange. So for the wood, I'm going to mix these together, and I'm going to get a bit of kind of a, a beigey orangey brown wood tone and for this figure that's going to go on the haft of his axe and it looks a little ochre a little orangey going on right now but when it dries and when it gets shaded in it's going to be a lot more brownie wood colored while still being a different brown than the other shades that I'm using on this figure. Uh, finally, for this particular figure, I'm going to use Monster Brown for his hair. It's a good light brown that works for uh, kind of a light to medium brown colored hair. And then finally, for the metal bits, the sword and his accent, I'm going to use plate mail metal. This is the middle tone of the Army Painter metallic colors, gun metal being the darkest and shining silver the lightest. And so I want to take this as a middle tier because I am going to darken this down with a shade. So I don't want to use the darkest one. It'll be too dark. I don't want to use the lightest one. It's going to look really clean. And these are these are Dark Age Vikings. I don't want them to have shining silver weapons. You can see I've already done a little bit of plate mail on this figure. And it looks real shiny right now. But once I shade it down, it's going to get a little darker. In fact, this is what it's going to look like. So we'll come back in a second and we'll see what all of the details look like. And then we'll talk about what shade we're going to use. 
So we have everything done here, the hair, the weapons, the wood, the leather belt, the leather shoes. You can see some of these other characters. I painted the one with the shield. I'm going with red shields for my Vikings just so they're very easily recognizable. When I do my Normans, they'll be in blue. And the last thing we have to do here is we're gonna do a wash. And I'm gonna be using uh, army painter washes I've been using. I'm gonna use soft tone and I'm gonna um, dilute it a little bit with the army painters wash medium. You could use water if you wanted. Um, I find this gives me a better effect. Water tends to affect the wash. It um, affects the surface tension. It affects the way it works. It makes it go incredibly glossy sometimes. So I'm going to use about two parts soft tone to one part wash medium. The reason I'm using soft tone is my alternatives were strong tone, which is a very dark brown, and it's really going to darken these characters down. I want to darken them down, especially the recesses of the skin. And I want to use an earth tone because it matches really all of the colors that I've gone with. Maybe not so much the blue, but I'm going to fix that. Um, but soft tone is a bit of a lighter color. It's a lighter brown. And these two figures on the end were my original tests. And you can see that is how they come out when the shading is done. Um, I am going to just hit this guy all over with the soft tone wash. So I'll mix it up. You do not have to be delicate with this. Just one, two drops of the soft tone. My palette's off camera, apologies for that. One top, one of the mixing medium. Mix it up a little bit. And again, this is not 28 millimeters. This is not panel lining. This is all over, practically dipping although I'm not using a dip. You could use a dip. They make a soft tone dip. I would actually recommend against using a dip on 15 millimeter figures because the dip is quite thick and 15 millimeter details are not super well defined on all figures. And so it can really annihilate a lot of your details and it is incredibly glossy. I would use a wash because it's going to dry much thinner than a dip. I'm also want to take my brush and in areas where there's a lot of pooling, get that off my brush, in areas where there's a lot of pooling, like here in his eye here, I want to pull some of that out so it doesn't get too dark. Then go in and hit his back. He, this, this particular 15 millimeter model has a lot of very well-defined muscles, so this is going to be a great effect. And it's also really going to help with the hair. And that's pretty much it. It's also going to kind of dinge up his blue pants. I'm going to make them blue again when I go back in and highlight. We're going to give this about 30 minutes to an hour to fully dry, and then we'll come back and see how it looks. So at this point, we have now applied our soft tone wash. It's fully dried for a couple of hours, and you could probably just throw this on the table and be really happy with it. These figures, uh, again, unknown manufacturer, have really good definition in all of their muscles um, and some of the uh, fur bits around the boots, the helmets, the hair. Um, even these figures, slightly different, they're more clothed barbarians. You can see they've got these fur trimmings that have lots of detail that took that wash well. This guy's kind of like a padded armor in it. So these all came out fairly well. You could play these and you could be done. What I'm going to do as a little option is I'm going to go in and just do a little bit of highlight. And right now I'm going to look at the pants and I'm going to look at the metal parts because the metal parts have lost some of their shine when I applied the wash. It kind of dulled them down, make them look a little brown. So I'm going to take my original base coat of plate metal, me uh, plate male metal. I'm going to apply it to the front, apply it to the top and the edge, and I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to apply it back here. So you can see there's like a big old coffee stain right there on that blade, which I probably could have avoided if I was a little more careful with the, um, with the wash, but it's dark underneath. And so it gives it that illusion of depth underneath the ax. Same thing on the sword, because this sword is a big flat plane, you can see more clearly that it has taken that shade and it's kind of dulled it down. So I'm gonna highlight it mostly up along the top. I'm gonna leave it a little tarnished and darker down by the bottom to get the illusion of a shadow. And along this side too, I'm just gonna do the top part I'm not going to bother down here because then it looks like it was a little bit shattered because the light's hitting it from above. I'm not going to worry about the cross guard and the pommel. For the pants, they've really been darkened down. That blue has really been 
uh, taken that wash and it doesn't really no longer, look, it doesn't look blue anymore. It's kind of like this dingy grayish blue. So I'm gonna take the original Luftwaffe uniform color, this kind of desaturated blue gray. And I'm just gonna hit the tops of the thighs down to the knees, anywhere where the light shining from above would pick up the folds of the cloth. This is not 28 millimeter. I'm not picking on individual folds. I'm more painting regions. And then on this side, because the underside of the thighs is gonna be in cover, I'm just gonna hit kind of like the seat of his pants and hit here along the top of his thigh. And then I'm actually, because of the angle, I'm gonna hit the back of his calves. But I'm not gonna go into the knees and I'm not gonna go under the thighs. And that's gonna pick up the brightness on those pants a little bit and just make them read as blue, as that desaturated woad blue I wanted. On these other characters, I'm gonna do a similar thing on the metal. And then on the pants, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna hit them with the variety. These were actually a variety of kind of um, beiges and whites, but the washes kind of made them look more like a variety of undyed wool or linen looks. And so I'm going to go in and on some of these, I'm going to hit them with a highlight. And on some of them, I might just decide to leave them. It kind of depends just on individually how they look. And then we'll come back and we'll hit the skin as the very last step. We're on to the last step. Now that we have highlighted these pants, it's not a dramatic change. They look a little less dingy. They read more as blue now. Um, if this is a heroic figure, if this was a leader figure, I might highlight those up a little bit more. For just this regular barbarian, especially one um, berserker where really most of the figure is in his flesh. I want to draw attention to the flesh, not the pants, and so I'm not going to bother highlighting his pants up more. Also, you can see now that the uh, metallic paint has restored the shine to those the sword and to the axe. And I didn't really highlight anything else except for this very last step, which is going to be the skin, because there's so much of it and it's so well defined. So I've taken my original color, Barbarian Flesh, um, but you could use any medium Caucasian skin tone. And I have watered it down, not too much. It's thin, it's translucent. I don't want it to be too thick. And so I'm just going to come in, and you want to hit the upper areas of his pecs, the edges of his pecs, leave a little shadow over by the neck. And then same thing over on the other. And then that's gonna look like the light reflecting off his muscles. I don't really need to hit his abs too much because they're in shadow, but here I can hit his biceps and his shoulder. And you wanna make sure that you leave the shading in the recesses, in the elbow, under the neck, it's so hard with these 15 millimeter figures to get good focus sometimes. Here on the, uh, I, I don't know what that muscle is called. The tricep, is that the one on the back of the arm? Back of his shoulder. His forearm a little bit. And then you can already see that from far away, you can really see the definition in his chest muscles and in his arm muscles. Just with a little bit of that original base color, you can see the difference between the arm here on the right and the arm over here on the left with the sword. Um, and it's a little dramatic right now because it's still drying, especially in the arms. On the back, there's a little less definition, so we don't have to worry about it too much. We're just going to hit his shoulder blades and down his back. And then kind of lead that recess in his back darkened. And then we'll finish up on the other side of the figure. I'm going to stop recording here so I can do this without the camera in my way, and then we'll come back when it's all dry and we can see the finished result of this model and all the other models I've been painting as well. And through the magic of editing, we are done. All the paints are dry and all the highlights are complete. So this is the one that we've been following, as you can see from, remember this is a 15 millimeter figure, so from far away, you can really see all of the muscles on him with just one paint, a shade, and then going back with that paint and hitting all the major muscle groups again. If this was a heroic character, I might go in and do uh, one more pass of a highlight, but just for a regular uh, rank and file troop or a berserker, so you know, not quite rank and file, but he's still going to be going into battle with a couple of friends of his. He's not going on his own. Um, this is perfectly fine for 15 millimeter. 
Uh, as for the other figures, you've got this big burly guy. Um, I've gone with red as the color for my Viking shields to differentiate them from the Normans I eventually do, which will be in blue, uh, just so it's easier to tell the difference between them. Although, obviously, with these Berserkers, that shouldn't be that hard. He's, as you can see, got a lot of major muscles. He's a significantly taller figure than him, although uh, they're the tiniest, um, especially on the back. I don't, I'm not sure if these muscles are anatomically correct, but... Uh, they are the muscles that were sculpted, and so I've hit them. And then even these little these little pygmy berserkers have got quite some muscles going on here. And so I've hit them, and you can really see everything that's going on. Uh, these figures, these were my berserkers that have a bit more clothing on. Uh, this guy over here has got the uh, wolf pelt, which really is just, I went in with a gray. Uh, in particular, I think I went in with a um, ash gray, which is just kind of a medium to light gray, and then hit that with that wash the uh, soft tone. And so there's less skin here to draw the eye, uh, but he's got these two weapons. So really the two weapons are going to draw the eye here. Uh, this figure, he ha doesn't have a red shield because his shield is molded in with wood grain. So I just went in with wood on there. Uh, I His pelt is a little bit different. I mixed a little brown into that gray. So it's kind of uh, desaturated and he's got this padded armor on. And finally, this guy has got a brown kind of wolf or bear pelt. It's It's really hard to tell what animal that is supposed to be, uh, I think it's a bear. I mean, it's a bear zerker, so that would make sense. Um, but that is pretty much it. Each of these figures, I didn't count the time, but probably no more than 20 minutes per figure all, all in, especially if I was kind of batch painting these rather than recording it. Um, but that's it. It doesn't take that much time, and they can look really good with just a simple base coat, wash, and just a touch of highlights on the things that you want to draw attention to. And in most of these characters, that's going to be the skin. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment or talk to me. I'm in the Little Wards TV patron discord. Um, but again, you can leave a comment down in uh, below if you are not in that discord. My follow-up to this is I'm going to be working on the cavalry. And so you are going to see some armor in these. Of course, we're going to have uh, horses. I hate painting horses. So I have a method that is... I, I hate it less than some other methods, and I'll talk about that when I go over how to paint these cavalry figures, and then from there we'll move on to the others. Everyone have a good day, and I'll talk to you later.